Awesome. So I'm going to share, uh, I'm going to try and share my screen. I think you can see it. Uh, we can, Vicky. Okay. Um, so I can't see you, but <laughs> um, so we're going to get started and I'm going to turn it over to Rosina for the land acknowledgement. Okay. We in the spirit of truth and reconciliation acknowledge that we are hosted today on the customary and traditional lands of the indigenous peoples of this territory, recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and the Inuit peoples. And if you'd like to tell us in the chat where you're from, what are your experiences with Microbit, I do recognize some Canadian names, so uh, let us know in the chat. Um, my current position is I'm an elementary guidance experiential learning teacher, so I work with 11 schools, um, and I service mostly grades 7 and 8 and 6 7s, and I really love the micro bit, uh, for particularly for this age group, and I have the pleasure of working with Rosina um, at her school, so I'll turn over to her to introduce herself. Hi, I'm a grade 8 teacher, and um, with Vicky, I've been able to explore using micro bits in the classroom, and I've it's loved and enjoy, I've enjoyed seeing uh, students who normally don't shine, shine using microbits. And so I'm, uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Rosina for the goals of the session. Okay, so our goals for the session is to learn about mindful breathing, to learn how to code a simple device to help lower and regulate breathing, and our next steps is uh, do your bit, do your bit challenge. Go ahead, Vicky. Uh, so. Um, as uh, an elementary guidance experiential learning teacher and with the pandemic, um, I really found and try to integrate uh, social emotional learning into my lessons. And one of the ways um, I've done that is through mindful breathing. So I've actually had the chance to take a mindfulness course, which I recommend. And in it, they talked about mindful breathing. So to bridge the two. Um, the lesson we're going to do today will will tie in mindful breathing and it's a great technique to calm and focus yourself when everything seems overwhelming which i think these days we can all use a little of um, and it's just spending a few moment, moments deliberately paying attention to your breathing can actually lower your heart rate and have a calming effect on your body and mind so when i begin the lesson i I do spend more time than we have talking about this and practicing it with the students. Um, I connect it to my own experience and how even with my Fitbit, I can notice my heart rate coming down um, and just taking a moment to pause. Okay, so as we practice our mindful breathing, I'd like you to sit comfortably and close your eyes. Pay attention as you breathe normally. Focus on taking one full deep breath. Observe how your breath feels and repeat for five breaths. And when you are ready, you can open your eyes. So in the chat, if you wanna tell us how, how, how that felt, I'm just gonna stop sharing for one moment. When we do this in class, I usually play some music. Um, I let uh, students, you know, uh, I turn off the lights, I play relaxing music. I, I tell them that it's okay not to close your eyes. I don't close my eyes at school because I need to be supervising them. <laughs> so, um, and I tell them that this is a tool that you can use before, and we talk about, well, when is this something that you can use? Uh, before a test usually comes up, when I'm angry at my parents, um, when I have a big game, and we talk about how athletes actually do this before they go out into a game or actors or actresses, or hey, even presenters, right? Before uh, we present or even, um, if you are going for an interview or any situation, this is something that you can use. So I'm hearing, I'm finding my inner balance. Inner yeah. Balance. Um, and a lot I've of been lucky this year to have students that I had last year. And in the event that I forget to do mindful ble uh, breathing, they remind me before a test, before a presentation, before mm -hmm. the big volleyball game. So it, it, it's something that they do um, enjoy. And so to connect this to the micro bit, there is a great lesson. Um, and I'm just gonna share my screen again, go back to our presentation. Um, there is a great lesson, which I took this from, and it is a SEL um, lesson, which I connected it to it. And there's a video which shows you how to then take the micro bit and I'll try and play it. I'm not sure how the audio will come through. It's very short.
Is there audio right now, Vicki? Yeah, so I, you probably can't, I, I know it's kind of, it's kind of, um, I'll put the link in the chat, but basically you're, you're programming the micro bit to show the animation. So on my, um, on my Fitbit, I actually have this, I have a relax, um, relax option where I can take the micro bit or not my micro bit, my, my Fitbit. And for two minutes, it will, it will, I'll follow the, the animation. So that's what we have the students do. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're actually going to program that together. And so I'm going to ask you to, if you would like to, you have two options. Um, you could log on to makecode.microbit.org. So let me just share my screen again. Or uh, when Rosine and I actually started working on microbit stuff, uh, we actually had some challenges because due to COVID, uh, we went from being in person to being virtual. So um, one of my best resources became the microbit classroom. Uh, which some of you might be familiar with. So if you would like to, if you could go to microbit.org slash join and uh, go, to, then you're going to be asked to type in red dog helicopter gift. And then there's our pin. Vicki, we can't see your screen. Oh, we, it we says see, I'm sharing. We, we don't see the presentation. Interesting. It says I'm sharing. Hmm. Okay. We can see the screen. It was just not the uh, slides. Yeah. Not the presentation. Okay. So yeah. here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just pop the links into the chat. And just so you know, Vicky, if you have the video that I saw was on YouTube. So if there, if you look right next to screen share, there's a YouTube share. So you could even put the link right there and it'll play audio beautifully. Okay. Um, and it'll share your screen. Um, yep. Let me know if you need anything else. Okay. Thank so this you. is, this is going to be our, um, and again, if you prefer, you could just use the makecode.microbit.org option. But with uh, Rosina and I, um, when we went virtual and not being able to walk around the classroom and see what the students were doing, that presented some challenges. So uh, by doing this, and I've still been using this this year virtually with my virtual classes, because I do have some classes that are completely virtual. This has been a lifesaver because I can see what the students are doing from home. And this is a great introduction lesson. So if you are not familiar with microbit or if you're working with younger classes, I, you know, this is something that you could do. It's very simple. We're only going to be using the, the blue blocks, which you'll see in a second. And of course, if you prefer not to do that option, you could do the makecode.microbit.org and just go in through there. But what's neat is I can see on my screen um, what you will be doing and kind of give you a shout out today. And it was great to help the students problem solve or if they were stuck on a step, we were able to see exactly what they were doing. So I can see Carlos is there and Hassam is there um, and Sarah and Kim and MA. So it's kind of nice that even though we're all over the world internationally, I can see what you're coding. I could share what you're coding. Um, and I could, you know, share share within it now this is still in beta to my knowledge so uh it's going to be interesting to see how it evolves but uh i'm a big proponent i can save it as well so a lot of teachers want us they were like I'd like to see what the students are doing uh for assessment purposes so this provides that opportunity so rosina do you think if i if i click can you share screen can you go into makecode.microbit.org do you think you can or do you want me to do it? Okay, let me let me put the link for you though, so it's easier. Just so that way I can see what people are doing. Let me uh, here. Let me give you the link. Don't go in through that one. <laughs> go in through this one. Okay. Yeah. So Sarah's saying Microbit Classroom has been such a game changer. Changer. Glad to see more people using it. Absolutely. Yeah. Hundred percent. So you do have two options. And then once you get to that screen, I'll just let Rosina um, catch up and then I'll get her to share. Okay. Uh,
It's letting me share. Is it letting you share? Let's try now. Hold on. Okay. Do you see it? If, Should be loading. Yep, I do. Awesome. So uh, she went, she clicked on new project and I usually teach the students to just name it something that's relative to what we're doing. Um, and then for my advanced students, they always have the option of coding in JavaScript or Python and the activity actually online, which I'll put, uh, will provide the resource later actually has the code for both of them. Um, so we're going to get rid of um, the on start button. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to drag it or you can click delete onto that. Yep. And we're going to just show the block based coding. So um, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the blue blocks. We're only going to be using the basic blocks on the left and we're going to scroll down to pause and we're going to drag out a pause block and put it inside the forever block oops I, I let go a little bit too early no worries and then we're going to change the variable to 2000 and i always tell the students you know we'll start with uh with with my variables but i let them personalize this after we have the basic code down and so they can do what they like. So if you want to get all fancy, go for it. Um, then we're going to go back to the blue because we're only using blue blocks, which is great. This, this is a great beginner lesson. You're going to go to show LEDs and drag that out. And you're going to put that underneath and we're going to start the inhalation. So we want that middle little dot uh, in the 25 microbits. It's the one in the middle. Perfect. So then I say you need another pause block. So you could go back to blue. You could get the pause block, but we know that shortcuts are awesome. <laughs> so the uh, easiest way to do it is to duplicate it. You could do that by clicking on the right on the block, right click, and then duplicate or control C, control V, which is, you know, even better. And we're going to change that variable to 500. Again, depending on your breathing rate and what you're comfortable with, this is your own device that you get to use. And then we are going to now go to the blue icons again. And we're going to go down to show icon this time which has a heart, but we're gonna change that. Drag that out underneath it. And we're gonna click on the down arrow and we're gonna go all the way down to uh, the diamond, the small, the um, smaller diamond. So, cause we're building our inhalation. So we wanna pause between that another 500. And then we are gonna, copy the show icon, but we're going to grab the bigger block, the bigger diamond, I mean, to the left of the other one. Okay, we have that one in. And then we're going to do another pause block. And I usually change this one to 2000, again, depending on your breathing rate and what you're comfortable with. And then we're going to, I, I talk about, it's an increasing inhalation. So for the decreasing, we're reversing it. So then we're going to get the smaller diamond so we can copy that block and put that underneath it. And then they usually catch on. Okay. And then now we need another pause block, but we're going to make it 500. Okay. And then the last, and then the last block is the first block, which was the start Sorry. of our inhalation. And that is it. Now from here though, I do let the students, depending if it's a beginner class, this will take a lot longer. Obviously Rosina has done this before <laughs> and I've done it before. So, and I'm sure a lot of you, cause I know I recognize a lot of names in the chat have definitely coded before. Um, so they get all fancy. Some of them add like, a string that says relax when you press a uh, or a positive affirmation for b like you're awesome you're amazing um, 
the music. Sometimes they could add the music, although I don't find that relaxing personally. Uh, <laughs> the beeping, um, <clears throat> but um, it's a very, very, and you can see on the left where the simulator is. And then of course we have micro bits. If we were live, we would all be hooking up our micro bits. I'm sure some of you have them at home, maybe version one, version two, and uh, that we practice inhaling and exhaling with it. So I'm just gonna look to the, um, the classroom and I'm just gonna peek and maybe I'll share some codes and, and show you just so you can see if you've never used the, um, and hopefully you're okay with that. If you're not, if you don't want us to share the, then just let me know in the chat. Uh, so Albert is actually, um, I can see Albert has added a string here. Let me share so that I can include your voices. And this is why I love the microbit classroom. Um, Sarah says, I love using this lesson with students. We added loops and talked about how many deep breaths they might need to feel calm and how it differs from person to person. Yeah. There's this great book I actually read in the summer. I can't remember the, the name of the author. It's called Breathe. It is fabulous. And it talks about the science behind breathing. Um, and it's, it's a fascinating read. So yeah, this is fabulous because you're connecting the um, SEL piece with the with the um, micro bit. So let me show you what you're all doing. So can you see my screen? Yes, we can. So here's what Albert is working on. And here's Carlos. Let's see if I can click on Carlos. Yeah, so this is, this is why it's a game changer because even though we're all over the world, right? I can see what you're doing. I can give you a shout out. I can make sure my students are in task. There's a share student code option. So I love pulling up when I'm working virtually just to say, hey, I love what so and so is doing. Um, so it's just a it's just a fabulous option for hybrid or virtual even even in class. That way you can, you know, see although I do like walking around and see what they're up to. So I'm going to share my PowerPoint again. And we're gonna we use this as a starting point to connect to the do your bit challenge. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Rosina, just give me one sec to talk a little bit about this was sort of some of the the entry lesson that we did. And then we built on that with the do your bit challenge. Oops, I went too far. Sorry. There you go, Rosina. <laughs> I still see your block screen. Oh, it's not working when I'm sharing. It says I'm sharing. Okay, hold on. I know what what happened. I can figure it out. And I'm going to go entire screen because I was on window. Here we go. And now you can, you can see, right? You have a question that we might want to answer before. So that was very this that was very quick. What comes after the fourth pause? Um, after the fourth pause, one, two, three, four. Oh, there is. We work backwards, so we do the. We're so after the fourth pause, we have the inhalation, and then we have the exhalation. That makes sense. Okay, so some of our examples that we had, um, or some of my students that, through the Do Your Bit Challenge last year. So if you don't know, the Do Your Bit Challenge brings together the micro bit and the UN's global goals to provide inspiring activities for classrooms or clubs. Um, it is a challenge and you can have your students uh, upload and I possibly win. Our students opted not to, but we still participated in the, um, in the activity. Uh, comes in a, a few languages or resources. Um, for our class, Vicky, if you don't mind mm -hmm. going to the next screen, some of the um, presentations or some of the final products that they did, and they had the option of doing a um, either a social and emotional learning one or something that can help the environment. So one did a wild um, life prevention system where they coded the micro bit to measure the temperature. And if it got to a certain temperature where... Um, where it can cause a possible forest fire, it would alert an, uh, the main officer, the, the uh, forest patrol, and kind of have them go out. So they would be attached to trees, have them go out to see where it is and possibly put it out before it would become an environmental crisis. The next one, Vicky. This one was an anti-poaching collar put on, uh, on um, any uh, animals that would be um, at risk of being poached. So 
again on the collar. So when it measured the, the uh, heart rate, so if when the animal was in distress, there would be another message sent to uh, do some um, monitoring on that one. And I think the last one, Vicky, was the identity tag. So this was used as either patients suffering from um, Alzheimer's or for parents to use for your kids to see where the identity to identify their child or the person who wasn't able to in the event that they were lost or um, or couldn't find their way. So they had just their name show up and their ID and a number to a contact. I think that was, those were the three examples. Oh, no, we had the fitness tracker to go. So this one's uh, similar to the, uh, the Fitbit, they tracked or they, um, when you're breathing, when you should be up and moving around just to keep you moving. And this one was done especially for COVID because they noticed they were on their computers and, you know, of course, on online learning, they were sitting more to get them up and moving and keeping active. I think that was the last one. Yeah. And um, because we, we were first in person when we started the do your bit challenge. So everything was working out amazing. We had, um, the kids were loving it. Uh, we had ambitions, we had ordered, um, servos and motors, and we were going to work with all of the equipment. And then we unfortunately were shut down. So, you know, I was like, okay, we're not going to do the do your bit. It's just not going to happen. Another loss. And then I was like, you know, when I talked to Rosina, she's like, we can still do it. And then, if you notice in some of the images, she's using, I'll go to back to the first one, the Tinkercad program. So in, Tinker, uh, in Tinkercad, there is an option, there's a micro bit simulator in there. And so even though at first we had thought, I thought I would literally drive the servos and all the equipment to the kids' houses or have them pick it up the school. Like I was trying to figure out a method. And then, you know, it's just not gonna work for a variety of reasons. So um, what we ended up doing is using the Tinkercad, the micro bit simulator in there, and it had the option for servos. And um, it really allowed the students to, to still be able to do the do your bit challenge. So um, I guess the lesson is regardless, there's always a way. It's just, it took a little bit of creativity um, and working with Rosina, like she was, like she, she didn't give up. And so I really appreciated that. And um, it was amazing. They worked in breakout room groups um, and, and I was still skeptical that this was going to like work, but they absolutely loved it. Um, so just a little shout out to Rosina and her students. Uh, uh, there, in, so, in, the, in the chat, there's a question of the age group. I think someone missed this. So the age group were grade eight students. So here it's grade 13 and 14 year olds. I did, however, have my own children work on it. So I had my um, grade one student. She was helping me out with it. And the drag and click part of it, keep in mind, the actual change in the numbers was a little bit harder for her, but she got the drag and click. So started her coding journey. Mm hmm. And there's lots of entry points and uh, resources if you've never done the do your bit challenge. So um, it's, you know, it's a great opportunity for for your students to, you know, give it a try, see what they came up with. Rosina and I spent a lot of time um, working on a design challenge. Um, we talked about the design process and we went through that. Uh, so who are you designing it for? really get to know your learner. Again, the the idea was pre-COVID that they would actually talk to people that they were designing the equipment for and get a sense of who they were, what their strengths and what their needs were. Um, so we did have limitations on that, but we also tied in the global, the sustainable global goals. Uh, because we're in a faith-based school, we talked, we connected it to uh, the faith, our faith and our um, our Catholic graduate expectations is what we call it in our, in our system. And, um, the other thing is that we did a lot of pre-teaching on social skills. So even though it was virtual, we still talked about how to give good feedback, um, you know, <clears throat> how to receive feedback and uh, how to be open-minded to receive that feedback. So there was a lot of teaching and group work skills that went along with it in terms of social emotional learning and um, trying to bridge that virtually again was, we were still able to do it. It just, everything took a little bit longer as I and think it, if you, and, yeah. Go and ahead. I think our next step was we were going to market, we were going to market the actual product and they were going to take part in a whole marketing um, campaign. But with COVID, that was a little harder to do a commercial or to do some sort of marketing. So we're going to try to do that this year. 
Yeah, because, because you could tie in the entrepreneurship piece and, uh, you know, our ambition was to try to find somebody who works in, in the, in a field that's similar to pitch their product, to get some feedback, um, to get, uh, to improve it, to improve their prototypes. Um, and to actually physically tangibly have a prototype, which again, was sort of limiting with the, the piece of being virtual. Just, I just want to highlight a comment. All students love the do your bit challenge and it's such a great way to problem solve, which is a great way to pull in and keep our girls in CS, which is true. And also our diverse learners really found a way to shine, whether it was through the uh, group work or the problem solving. We had people using JavaScript, JavaScript that I wasn't aware of how to use. So it was, it really um, brought out their leadership skills within the students. I think that's a really good point is that with a lot of the teachers I work with, sometimes they think they have to know something inside and out. Um, and that's not the case. Uh, you know, you have, you're always in a, you have to take comfort in a position of, of learning alongside your students and that um, learning from them. So uh, it happened to me the other day, we hooked up a micro bit, it said maintenance, so it wouldn't show when we were trying to um, load the hex file on and a student said, miss, you know, it needs a firmware update. It's a really old micro bit. And I was like, awesome. So, you know, I have a little ICT person in my class who was able to problem solve and troubleshoot with me. And, and you know, that, that maybe isn't how we're traditionally used to being taught, but it's, um, it's the best way. I love it. I'm always learning and it's always exciting. So it's okay not to know the answer. I love saying, I don't know. Um, I always tell the students, I'm not a computer science major. I'm an English major and a communications major because they think I come from a CS background. I don't, but I have a mentality and so does Rosina that we're able to learn with our students and grow. And, um, that just, I think creates a really rich environment and opens up the opportunity for them to lead too. So how are we on time? I think we're good. We are good. Gonna... All right. So now we just want to um, final reflections. I'm going to pop in a whole bunch of resources too into the chat. Um, but what did you learn today? What would you like to try with your students? Uh, what are you still wondering about? Um, what questions do you have? Any last thoughts? And while we're doing that, I am actually going to just pop in some links here into the chat. So, so I'll read a few comments while you're doing that. So we have also with uh, group-based projects, we see students learning so much more than coding, leadership, collaboration, communication, et cetera. And we have great communication for our Catholic schools. We tend to perform Christian med uh, med meditation after lunch to calm our students before learning. Great cross-curricular activity. Yeah, it's, um, it's incredible like how much students, especially these days, really benefit from activities like this. And the um, the website does have a variety of ones. So last year we did another activity where show your smile, where we couldn't smile with our um, masks. masks on, but we were able to program it and send each other virtual uh, smiles. So this is the this was the inspiration and then I just tied it into, and again, I do spend a, a great deal of time going over what mindful breathing is, how it benefits you, the research behind it. And for our advanced students, if you look on that site, there is the option. And I do find that now I'm having more and more students um, heading into Python and myself, I've been learning it. So again, don't know it, but learning, um, this is where the activity actually stems from. And um, the micro bit classroom, uh, which I highly, highly recommend using if, if you're virtual. Is so we great. have a question. How would you answer the question? Is the do your bit challenge a good option for someone who has never programmed a micro bit? A hard question. I'm not sure how to answer. I would say yes. So in my class, I had a group of, I would say maybe four to five um young men who did not want to code they were completely against code it was out of their uh way of thinking and they were the the uh the group that produced the uh anti-poaching collar so they were hesitant they they didn't want to problem solve but had zero code experience and they still managed to do the code and be successful at it yeah and i and it's funny because um because i work with a lot of uh, teachers and um a lot of them are new and they've never done the micro bit i've had some of them say I don't know about this. Like, this is so much work. It's scary. I don't, you're like, I don't, 
I'm nervous. And I'm like, it's okay. You got this. I'm nervous too. And then if they just have a little trust when they start the process, like it just blows your mind what happens and what, what the final products are. And like Rosina said, sometimes those students who don't traditionally shine have an opportunity to really come out of their shell. So it's providing, you know, different experiences for different learners. And, and there's different entry first, points. It was yeah. my first experience with microbits. So if I was able to do it, <laughs> it, I was learning alongside with my students and they saw that um, that has a good thing. They're willing to uh, challenge themselves too. Just trying to see if there's any other um, questions. I'm just going to pop in a few more resources. But do your bet as well. And the global goals, like when we when we um, created our lessons, uh, we took from this site as a starting point. So we talked about, you know, we looked at other students, we looked at the videos, we connected it to the global goals. And they have some great starter lessons there for all levels. So from beginner to advanced. We branched off even on using digital citizenship. So how do you, what is your digital etiquette when you're online and you're collaborating with somebody and you know, it's, it's very different way of communicating as opposed to being in person. So we have somebody who mentioned uh, the do your bit has a booth in the expo area too. And thank you to the people who tried MA, Carlos Daya. I'm still looking at your codes and uh, I can see um, a variety of, of, of uh, different projects. So it's kind of neat to see that, what everybody came up with or is coming up with, because we still have people coding. And my dog would like to say good morning. <laughs> I can hear him yapping, so I might mute. Okay, I missed the beginning. Can I enter a microbit classroom using teacher generated code without kids registering their info? Uh, yeah, so when you go to the um, when you go to the website and you launch the classroom, the students don't have to enter any personal information. So that's another great um, point, Kelly. Yeah, you just launch it and uh, and it will uh, it will basically give you. Here, I can show you on my screen very quickly. Uh, let me just uh, go back here. Window, I'll just share my screen. So where are we here? Yeah, so this is my screen. And if I go to dashboard, the students, all they have to do is go to the microbit.org slash join, then they'll have to enter this. And I usually model it with the students and show them, especially the first time, and then they put in the pin. I can also snip this, put into this into my learning management system, whether that's um, you know uh, Teams or, or Google Classroom or D2L or whatever you're using. Uh, and then if you scroll down, here's all the names. So if I click John, John is finished. John has submitted his work, and I can download this into a Word document. So I have uh, the whole file, but here's what John has created. And so you can see what uh, students have done. If it was Python, they would be coding in Python. And then I can save it. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, it's a great resource. It is awesome, yeah. And hopefully it continues to evolve. <laughs> that's my hope. Well, thank you so much, Vicky and Rosina. I mean, I think that was an amazing presentation, not only with all the SEL components, but I think um, I'm very passionate about seeing how technology and um, can impact and do good for students and showing them that, you know, there's, there's different ways to be using it. So really appreciated that. Also a huge shout out to the chat um, for being engaging and for participating. I think Vicky, you're right. It's such a great ask and I love when the audience, especially when you have teachers and educators in the audience, it's always um, harder sometimes to make them go for it. So really love that you all were participating. Um, Vicky and Rosina, always a pleasure and just great to, I think, to learn inspiring content that we can take back into the classroom. 
So thank you. We are now at time. I um, want to encourage everybody to head over to the stage for the closing um, for this morning. Don't worry, we still have an entire portion in the afternoon or evening or whatever time it is for you. Um, but before that, we have a closing happening in five minutes at the stage. So join us there. Thank you for having us. Yeah, and Thank feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.